Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Iron 4. I'm here with Moosey. Hi. And this is your first <laughs> time playing. Yep, this is literally the first time I've ever fired up Hot Iron. Awesome. Yeah, so, this is going to go so badly. The plan here is attempt to teach Moosey the game. Hopefully people watching will get some insights into learning the game themselves because I know quite a few people bounce off it initially. Yeah. Um, if you know what you're doing, you may find it painful to watch initially and may want to come back at later points in time. Because, um, <laughs> yeah. So we're going for Brazil, and I have some reasons for that. Um, so the tutorial normally gives you Italy. The problem I find with Italy is, one, well, they're a major power. They're whacked right in the middle of Europe, and they have to deal with Africa, and it's just a lot of stuff to deal with, and it kind of throws you in at the deep end. Oh, yeah. Um, so Brazil has some nice things which I will point out once we get in. Um, now, because okay. you've picked Brazil first, unfortunately, when you do a cooperative on a country, only one person, which is I think the first person that clicks it, gets the like the story pop-ups, if you like. Um, okay. So that's beneficial for you because you actually want to probably see those as you won't have seen oh, them before. Okay. Right? You can probably read out you know a tenth of it, and I'll have a good idea of what it is and what you need to click. Okay. Um, so we're doing historical AI focuses because that actually helps us out with regard to the US, which I'll point out once we get in there. And that's about it. So if you want to ready up, we'll get going. All right, let's give it a bash. We're going to stay paused for quite some time <laughs> <laughs> whilst I try and go through all of the stuff. <laughs> Just <laughs> all of the stuff. It's just um. getting your head around the UI to start with, really. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, like you've already got a million notifications, and that's as Brazil. You can imagine what okay. it's like when you're a major country. Yeah. So they're the things top middle of my screen. Yeah, but we won't start with those. So if you click on okay. any of the provinces in Brazil yourself, you get the little window pop up in the bottom left. Um. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um. If you oh, then and... click on the actual flag of Brazil, you'll get some information up about your country. And you can do this for other countries, but the Brazil's the one we want for the minute. You see Probably. under Diplomacy, there's the little US flag. Well, whoa. Where? <laughs> uh, so, so, so you click on any of the provinces in Brazil. Yeah. You get the bottom left window pop out. Yeah. Top left of that says State Owner. I'll click on that flag. Yeah, click oh, on that flag. One. You get a new window. Yep. Yep. On the left there, if you hover over the US one, you can see that yes. the United States is guaranteeing Brazil's independence. Okay, cool. They do that for the whole of South America. The problem okay. is, it's rather difficult to guarantee independence of two countries when the two countries are bashing each other's heads in. So the US kind of goes, eh, we'll leave you guys to that. You, <laughs> you, you boys have fun. Until later in the game when they research the Monroe Doctrine, at which point they can start getting involved. Cool. But on the historical focuses, they tend to not really bother with that. Um, which means nice. you're you're basically free to have a free for all fight with South America, and nobody else in the world will get involved because they don't want to piss off the US. Lovely. Um, so the only places you won't be able to take are the three little lands just on the north edge of Brazil, which are owned by France, the Netherlands, and the UK, until we end up in the bigger war. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's why Brazil is nice. Because we just get to pick on everybody else. Yeah. In and, South America. And in South America, we're probably the biggest country there. Fantastic. So we'll start in the very top left. Yeah. Uh, let's do it. Ignoring the flag, you've got the numbers across the top. National unity, 70%. Yep. Um, so there's sort of victory points around your country. That percentage is sort of how sort of uh, united the country is. If that was really yeah. low at, say, 20%, the enemy would have to take 20% of your victory points and then you just capitulate. You don't get a choice. You're just done. Oh, okay. The people just go, nah, we're out. See you later. Okay. Which is why France falls so fast because their national <laughs> unity is something like 30, maybe, 40. It's very low. <laughs> okay. So you just blitzkrieg into France. Yeah, everything. as long as you can grab some major victory points, you can just knock France out rapidly. How do you... What What is a victory point on the map? Uh, so if you zoom right in on, say, uh, the capital city, has got a star on it. If you hover over that, so Rio de Janeiro has is worth 16 victory points. Uh, where... Oh, okay. Oh, the star there. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Oh, he's worth 16. Yeah, okay, cool. And anywhere with like a little small square like Sao Paulo to the west there is a town, so it's worth 14. It tends to be the cities. Okay. <laughs> Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo. It's just, It'd be good if my just west of Rio. Uh, like two or three provinces. It's not far at all. Oh, okay, okay. So on a province, right, you can click then into something inside a province? Yep, so you've got... You've got to get the names right. Um, yeah. Uh, there, there's provinces and uh, possibly territories. Oh, state. It's called state. A state. Right, there you go. States. Cool, okay, right, makes sense. So, yeah, that's, so how, that's how you spot the victory that. points. Cool, yeah. So you, you generally want to watch out for people trying to basically ninja your capital and your other big cities because they will, yeah. it will just force you to um, collapse. Die. Right. How do I, so? Hang on. When I clicked on Sao Paulo, where do I see how many victory points that is? Uh, so you just hover over the little square, and it will pop out. Sort of Brazil controls this location in Sao Paulo. It's worth X victory points. Just on the main map. Just hover over the city. Oh. The, oh. Okay. I just realised if you zoom in, I can actually see Sao Paulo. I was zoomed out so oh, far. You, I was like, you, you were I like way out here. Sao okay. Paulo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, this makes sense. Oh, I like the zoom in detail. So, um, so next to national unity, you've got political power, which is um, kind of like. I mean, you've played Crusader Kings. No, I've watched quite a bit of it though. So, okay, it's, yes, it's kind I, of yeah. like the the resources you gain there that you spend for political influence to pick advisors and that sort of stuff. Yep. Uh, the next one across is your available manpower for recruiting into your army, air force, and navy. Um, Our air force is tiny. Yeah, we we won't talk about the South American Air Force. It's not, it's not particularly a threat to anybody but themselves. Uh, they're more likely to fly into the mountain than shoot anything down. I think. Um, next to that, you have factories. So if you hover over it, it tells you what the breakdown of those factories are. So you have military, naval, and civilian. Got you. Okay. Which I'll, I'll go into detail once we get to a point where that's relevant. Okay. Um. Right, where to start? <laughs> okay, right uh, in the very top right is quite an important one. The picture of the globe. Yeah. You got a little percentage just below it. That's yep, the world percent. tension. So as Germany and Co go around um, making friends, should we say? Yeah. Uh, that will go up. The higher it gets, the more the democracies can do. So the okay. democracies can't do anything whilst basically war, uh, world tensions at zero because everywhere's peaceful and they're just like ah, we'll just sit here and we'll, we'll do nothing we'll just wait yeah cool um, as the, more and more stuff goes on they can ramp up their production and things like that okay um, which is why if you're playing japan you can horribly screw the game up because you go on a massive early rampage and all the democracies get big before germany can <laughs> love it uh right back to the very top left you got your big brazil flag you go into yep. this one a lot. So you got a nice, cozy picture of your leader with a name you can't pronounce. Getulio Vargas. Yep. Uh, next to that, you have Select a National Focus. This okay. is effectively your tech tree. If you want to click that and pop it out. Oh, wow. Cool. So the major nations will have a unique one of these. All of the minor nations will share this one you're looking at at the moment. Got you. Um, you uh, tend to find there is Army, Air Force, Navy. There's one that supports your industry, and then there's one for the political stuff. Um, got you. The major nations will have extra bits, like uh, Germany and um, the USSR will have like the Molotov, Rivendrop Pact, and you know things that are historical. Okay. Uh, generally, because oh, I probably should touch on that before I explain why. If you go back to the the main flag political screen. Yep. Where you got your leader's picture. Yep. Um, just below national focus, you've got just a big grey circle. Uh, yep. That should be a pie chart. The problem is we're one hundred percent neutral. Um, okay. So the different parties. So the AIB are fascist, the PCB are communist, and the UDP are democratic. Lovely. Um, basically, if you're neutral, you just sit there and do nothing. So we want to push one of those three. Um, cool. Because we want to go on a mass rampage, you want either communist or fascist. I would probably <sighs> recommend fascist. Yeah. Let's establish Vargas as our dictator. Uh, he'll actually get replaced. 
Oh, yeah. Vargas. Sorry, yeah. mate. He's, he's too <laughs> neutral. It's that bow tie thing. <laughs> yeah, what, what is that? Oh, beautiful. Um, so, yeah, if you go back into the National Focus tree. Uh, yep. You go to the far right hand side, you've got the political tree. Got yep, yep. So, the top tier you have to do, and that just gives you some effort. You then get collect it takes collectivist oh, or takes. Okay, liberty, yep. and you see that little exclamation mark between them. That means you have to pick one or the other. You can't do both. Got you. Yep. Um, so, the left side goes to fascism and communism, the right side goes to neutral and Demo uh, democrat, I think. Yep, okay. I can't actually see democracy, but... Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> Who needs democracy? We don't um, need that. So if you click on political effort and sort of set it running, these gen generally take 70 days. Um, there's a few odd ones on certain countries that take longer. Like um, Stalin's purges will take, I think it's 100 or 200 days or something. Got you. Okay. Um, so the idea of what we're going for is if you hover over nationalism focus uh, so where, so where, oh, there, yeah, down got left it. and down okay. again you see yep. daily fascism support plus point 0.1 that's what we want we want to start pushing the fascists into power okay and um, once we get that we can start looking at something else okay probably do the industry just because we're well we're effectively a third world country let's do it um so back to the main screen where you've got your Brazil flag again. Yep, love it. So below the pie charts, you've got your laws and governments. So the first one is who can join your army. If Volunteers, you, got you. Pop you. into that, you can see the various different things. Um, I'll let you hover over them and see the, yeah. the different. Yeah, <laughs> disarmed, disarmed yeah. nation, love it. I, I don't know why anyone would go backwards towards disarmed, but. Um, That'd be great. So the next one along is your exports. So a percentage of your civilian factories get put on the open market for export and you can change how much of that happens. Got you. Um, you get... Oh, hang on. It's... You get better factory output, construction speed and research time if you're putting more resources to market. But obviously you're then losing the access to those factories. Got you. So okay. So you have to weigh it up. Okay. Um, the next one along is your economy type. So you got civilian starts and mobilization, and they have different requirements to trigger. So this yep. is where you can see what I was on about with the world tension. So democracies can't even get early mobilization until there's five percent world tension. Got oh, yeah. They are locked to the civilian economy. Yep. Okay. Uh, the next three are political advisors. These are like your sort of, um, well, as the name implies. The one you're interested in is the fascist demagogue, because he pushes fascism. Oh, okay, but we need 150 yep. uh, political power to be able to get him. But that okay. first political effort thing you're researching gives you 120. Okay, cool. Um, so you should be near enough enough to get him once that time hits. Oh, yeah. Um, what's some other good ones in there? The backroom backstab is pretty good. That gives you 5% extra political power gain over time. So gotcha. if you can get him early... You know, his bonus stacks up for you having a lot more at the end of the game. Yeah. Uh, there's a national UT one to fix that. If we ever thought that was going to be a problem, it's likely not at 70%. Um, and the compassionate gentleman, monthly opinion. It's not amazingly helpful either, really. <laughs> the, the bigger countries will have a lot more options in this window. Yeah. Do we get more as we go through or not really? No, you don't really get more of these guys. Got you. Uh, okay. Research and production. So the first three are your, uh, your tanks, your ships, and your aircraft. You can sort of... Again, we don't get really any option at all. Uh, if you click <laughs> on the aircraft one, you'll see some options. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you go. can prioritize a specific type of vehicle. You know, if you wanted to focus on heavy fighters and tactical bombers, you'd go with the medium air company. Yeah, Whereas if you're you. doing lots of naval carrier-based stuff, you'd probably go with the navy air company. Yeah. Ah, heavy bombers, come on. Let's, let's, let's flatten them. Pretty much fighters, uh, other than when you're South America and it doesn't matter, if you're any of the major nations, the, the, I'll say meta, although I hate using that as a term, yep. is spam fighters, because if they can't get anything over your territory, then you're safe. Got you, okay. And then you can spend all your fighters into their territory to shoot all of theirs down, and then you're free to do what you like to them. Yep. Air superiority. Yep. 
Nice. Um, and okay. the, the military staff at the bottom just give you boosts to various things. Not to you, Army Chief of Navy. Got yeah. you. Right, so oh, so then you can pick the one that gives you... Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, nice. Like so that. we probably wouldn't worry about Air Force because we're not likely to have one. Uh, Navy will <laughs> we'll likely have a few boats to transport some people, but nothing particularly worth worrying about. Uh, the Chief of the Army is going to be an important one. Yeah. Um, and so will the three end high command guys. Yeah. Although okay. only one of them's actually useful. Yeah, Arto de Costa S. Silva. Okay. Whether you get more when we change to fascist, you may pick up some more then, I'm not too sure. Alright. Okay, next tab along is the little um, sort of science beaker, which is the research yep, tab. Yeah, research. Yeah. So you've got two slots at the moment. Other countries get more. Um, within the the big tree you looked at earlier, there's the opportunity to unlock more of these if you go a certain path through it. Got it, yeah. Okay. If you click on the first one... Oh my one, god, we can have special forces. Oh yeah. Oof. So the tabs along the top, there's a lot of them. Oh um, Christ, are right, yeah. The important bit to note is the dates along the top. If you're trying to research, you think of them as columns. If you're trying to research anything that's before the actual date, it's got a massive yes. penalty. You know, trying to research nuclear weapons in 1936 is a bit of a stretch. Got it, yeah. Okay, okay. Where is nuclear weapons? Uh, it will be under engineering, which is the second from end tab. Oh, yeah, sweet. 1940, you have to start. Um, generally, what I get to start with is the one at the start of engineering, the um, electronic mechanical engineering, the little yep. sort of vacuum tube looking thing. Oh, because it takes less time to research. Yep. So that's a okay. nice benefit that stacks. And that, that whole tree on the right hand side of that branch it splits into is for. Research time more reduction. More and more minus. Yeah, got you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other one worth getting is in the industry tab. There's actually a few worth getting in here, but you have to unlock the first one to get yeah. access to them. So these um, increase the output of your factories and the speed you can build them at, and you know, give them some nice bonuses. Okay. So do you want me to start basic machine tools? Yeah. So pick from... one of them with this, and it will pop you back to the other menu, and then with the second slot, you pick the other one. Got you. Right. Uh, engineering. Let's do it. Okay. Nice. Diplomacy. Uh, I don't think I've ever used the diplomacy tab. Okay. Onwards. Uh, trade. Trade. So this one's quite useful. Good example on top right. See, it says rubber. So we're producing yes. 30. If you zoom yep. in just the right amount on the map, you'll see little icons pop up. Oh, yes, so I do. Um, so you'll notice we've got 30 rubber, uh, what's that? Four aluminium, four iron, or steel, steel, sorry. Steel, yeah, steel, yeah. And nothing else. You'll also notice there is zero oil, so um, tanks are not really useful in, to us. in the question. Um, Hasn't Bolivia got bucket loads of oil? If you look to the I mean, north like in Venezuela, Venezuela yeah. Oh, Venezuela! Let's uh, conquer them first. Also, Cuba has a very nice deposit of something. Chromium. Oh, hello. You only tend to need that for the heavier tanks, so it's not amazingly... Like, it's not something to rush for early game. Basically, you're going for an infantry army as Brazil. Well, Got it, you. As most countries that aren't the major powers. Got you. Oh, um, let's push on Venezuela first. Get all that oil. I love oil. So you can see we produce 30 rubber, but 15 of it's being exported. Because... Yep. Other countries are basically going, hey, yeah, we want some of that. Um, yep. Except at the moment they're not, which is why we have a surplus, I think. Got it. The surplus might be okay. what we're not using. I can't remember that exact number yet. Okay. Um, if you hover over the traded goods tab, yep. you can see yep. what percentage are used and what percentage are available. Yep. If, if we wanted access to, I don't know, let's pick one. So these little tabs, pick uh, pick oil is a good, ex good example. If you okay, wanted so... oil, you this is the list of people from top to bottom who has the most. So America have the most. Yeah, so America have access to the most. If you clicked on them, yep. you effectively trade your civilian factories for eight of their resource. If you move the slider along. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you, basically, they're sending you eight oil and you're leasing them a factory to produce toasters or whatever they want. Oh, yeah. 
Hang on, um, are we buying eight or eighty-eight points? Uh, you don't need to actually any at the moment. <laughs> oh. uh, do we? What do we need? No, we need some steel. So those notifications you mentioned at the top middle, the far yep. right one is the you're running out of resources thing. Ah, okay. If you click that, it will take you to the resource you're short of, which is steel. Oh well, yeah, okay. Um, so if you click the US, yeah. And then the easiest way to do it is that clipboard with the little hash sign immediately selects on the slider the right position to get the amount that you need. Oh, so it says buy eight for one civilian factory. Yeah, send? and then you just click send. Wait, and done. The symbol's still there at the moment because we're paused. Okay, got you. Um, so you now see we're trading one of our 11 factories and that little yep. notifier window. Lovely. Um, if you look at steel at the top where it says produced, exported, imported, you've got like a little cardboard box with an X. Yes. If you ever want to cancel your deals with people, you just click that and it would cancel all of the steel deals. So if you suddenly came into a massive influx of steel because we conquered, I don't know, let's have a look. Say we took out Argentina and Chile, we'd suddenly have yep. 32 steel and didn't need eight off of America anymore. You'd yep. go in there to cancel it to get your factory back. Got you. Okay. Uh, right, next one along is constructions. Yep. Um, so this is where your civilian factories build things. Got you. Okay. Um, from the top of that window, you can see from trade. So if someone ends up sort of buying our rubber off of us, you'd see how many factories we're getting for it up there. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Uh, it also shows you how many you're losing to traded and consumer production. These uh, stuff, yep, the yep. stuff you're building In, is all these is... bits on the right. So, yep. like railways, air bases. Um, probably early on, the one you want is civilian factories, which is the middle block. It's the top right one of the middle block. Okay, so if, what if I. Well, our factories will be building civilian factories. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Which then means those then help build more civilian factories and you end up with a nice yeah. steamroll. Um, so nice. You, you click it, it will colour code your country for you. Gotcha. So um, the, that tells you how many you can put down in each region. Yep. Bear in mind, if you want a navy, you're likely going to want to put dockyards in coastal provinces. So don't spam all of your factories and take up all the coastal slots and then go, ah. Uh, right, front uh, out. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so, I mean, just click left click some down in central regions. Just, I know, fill, yeah. up, fill up the Amazon with them. Yeah. Uh, where, where is it? Okay. Put something there. What, the whole of. Yeah, yeah. Just leave all the coastal ones for now, I guess. And that four out of six that's uh, Sao Paulo can probably fill up with them. Uh, can we. I've got 18. On my trade tab on the left, it now says 18 and 18 in use. Okay, so if you look at this or the queue, seven of them are consumer goods, one goes to trade, and 10 out of 15 yeah. are on that first production site. Got ya. So if you had 30 factories, it would do the first two in the list. Okay. Yep. Um, right. Uh, military factories are what are going to produce your guns, your bombs, your that sort of stuff yeah so we will need them but maybe a bit later yep cool um dockyards produce your battleships the ones yep. slightly further down which is naval bases are used for trade routes uh supplies transporting troops that kind of stuff as opposed to making ships gotcha yeah all right we can ignore that tab now production yep so uh, what's the best way to show you this? Um, towards the top, you can see your resource use. So you still got steel minus two at the moment. Yeah. But we will have six, won't we? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Just below that, you've got how many military factories available. So currently, we're using two out of three. Uh, oh yeah. Got and you. the way you assign more is that little grid next to things. So basic infantry equipment. You see, you've got one factory assigned to it. If you click the box next to it, it'll add another one. Got you. And if you were to click, I don't know, say three boxes along. Yep. So they're shaded out because you don't have them at the moment. But if you were to build them, that you would automatically deploy in, into that production. Got you. So at the moment, we're making just under 10, 10 a day. Basic infantry equipment a day. Got you. Yeah. Okay. If you look just above the little factories, you just click down, there's that bar. 
Yep. That's your production efficiency. And you can see okay. the reasons why things are slow. Um, the research, Lack of resources. The research you're doing on that industrial tab will push that towards the 100% end of the scale. At the moment, oh, yeah. it's capped at okay. 50 because that's just the highest you can do. Um, okay. It, it builds up over time. And if you were to change a factory, so say if, don't do it, but if you were to delete both the factories out of making basic infantry equipment and put them in support equipment, yep. you would have a massive penalty because you've effectively just taken guys that know how to build guns and gone, hey, look, you're building medic kits now Got you. and radios. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> what do I do? Teaching, please. And there's like a training time. So okay. if you can avoid taking stuff out of things you already are building, yeah. Try not to, but if you don't need it anymore, then just you know redeploy it. Gotcha. Um, if you want to add more stuff to that, you got those buttons with the the helmet and the artillery. You know, you could pick transport planes. <gasps> Amazing. And sort of it puts a new thing in the queue, and then you assign your factories to it. Okay, cool. But we don't have many ah, mi military you, factories. You can do that with dockyards. So if we say we want one destroyer. Uh, destroyer one. Yep. Click that. So what do I need to click? Create variant or just uh, click no, on the Don't worry about the variant bit for now. Okay. So, so in see... nine years we'll get a, a, a destroyer. Yep. But you can see in the top left of it, it's making an infinite amount of them. So if ah. you push just the plus once, it'll make one. Cool. Um, and then if you add another thing and add convoys and have the second dockyard making that, you need convoys to transport goods that you're importing and things like that. Transport your troops around. Got you. Okay. Right, that's that tab done. Uh, recruit deploy. Yep. So at the moment we have cavalry, which I won't even comment on how terrible those are. Oh my god, Where, where's our cavalry division? Uh, the, well, we, is this what we can Templates train? on the right, you got the Divisial de Infantaria. Yeah, and Divisial de Cavalry. If you click edit on the infantry one, it shows oh. you the sort of the makeup of them. So it's two columns of four infantry units. Yeah. And then they have on the left the support detachment of engineers. Yep, got you. Um, some things can go in either place, so you could have artillery in the support, and it will be like a small segment of artillery that doesn't slow the army down. Oh, yeah. okay. it only gives it a small boost or you could put it as a main part of the army at which point you get a lot more out of them because there's a lot more of them but yep. they will slow the army down because you're dragging a whole division's worth yep. of artillery around <laughs> got you, okay uh, the numbers you're interested in are up in the top right soft attack is attacks versus infantry and yep. hard attack is attacks versus tanks effectively okay so if you're going up against tanks, having soft attack is just going to do nothing. And if you're going up against yes. infantry, hard attack's not particularly helpful. Got you. So uh, equating that to uh, like total war, <laughs> that's like armor piercing and yes, attack. Fantastic. Cool. Right. Makes sense. Basically, soft attack will just bounce off the armor of tanks, and hard attack. Yeah. Um, I don't think hard attack does anything against infantry, but it might do. It makes sense if it okay. did. Yeah. You know, it's not an efficient way of doing it. Okay. Um, so if you click the train button now on your infantry. Whoa. Oh, oh, back there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Train. Yes, there's a few Boom. things you need to do here. So it's making an infinite amount of them, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've got no location set. So if you click that and then pick probably Rio de Janeiro, that's the point where they will deploy when they are fully trained. If I just. Yep. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, so at the moment, what it's doing is it will train one unit of it. or mm. Sorry, it will gather the resources for one unit, which is that little sort of supply box progress yep. bar. Yep. Then it will train them up to full, and then it will deploy them in Rio de Janeiro, and then it will start another one. Okay. If you clicked add unit, yep. it will now train two at the same time, and so on and so forth. So it depends cool, yeah. how... You know, if you can produce the equipment quick enough to train 50 at a time, you may want to do that. Because cool, yeah. most of their time will be spent training, which is the star icon. Okay, yeah. 
Um, you can. How long does it? Oh, there we go. You can deploy early, but the veterancy of units is a big thing in who wins a fight. Okay. Um, and having you want them fully trained. You want them as trained as it will get them here, basically. Okay. Um, so the. How does it tell you? So it tells us the training will be done by the sixth of May, nineteen thirty-six. Yep. How do I know how long it will take me to make my equipment? Do I have to go back to uh, the? That that I don't think it's very good at estimating that. That will depend sort of how you twiddle the other stuff around. Okay. Cool. Um, you can hover over and it will tell you how much they need. So they need eight hundred and ten infantry equipment and they need thirty support equipment. Yep. Um, so okay, you'll, cool. you'll sometimes what you'll see is the bar's like ninety percent full, and you'll hover over it, and they've got all of their infantry equipment, but they're missing just support equipment. Yeah. Um, so you know you can play with your production lines so that you sort that out. Yeah, got you. Uh, the other two interesting things in here are upgrades and reinforcements. So reinforcements basically means you've got armies out in the field that aren't fully full strength. Yep. Um, so some of your production will go to putting men into those units. Yep. Upgrades will be when you get better guns, you're producing the new guns, but you've also got to try and refit all of your existing men with them. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so those little bubbles on the right, you can assign a priority. So if yep. you wanted to go, no, all the guys in the field can just use what they've got, new units only want the guns, you would set the, the division, like the training guys, to high priority, which is the right-hand bubble. Yep, yep. And they would get and all, all of the new own. stuff first. Got yeah. So what you probably want and to do is actually done... high priority the reinforcements just so the armies we've got are up to strength. Okay, high priority that then. Um, and you'll check on this periodically and once that's up to four you can just set it back to normal. Cool, okay. Um, and then the last tab is logistics, which is basically what's in your warehouse. Got it, yeah, okay. Um, so you're 1,600 rifles short of what you need. You're 60 supply uh, support equipment short of what you need, but you've got 40 convoys sitting around not doing anything at the moment. Smashing. <laughs> right. And because you've gone through all of those, you've got rid of most of the notifications just through yep. doing what you've been doing. Cool. Uh, last few buttons. Top right-hand corner. You've obviously got the date yes. thing with the speed controls. Yep. Below that, you've got the army tab, which will list all of your army units. All, um... Cool. Seven of oh, them. we've got some... Yeah, we've got some cavalry units. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, you got your navy. So we actually have a battleship, which I'm fairly sure was probably built by the British and sold to us, but... Uh, that's the bottom one, yeah? Yeah, we got two battleships, even. Um, where, 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 what? So, sorry, um, so those in that navy tab Jesus. is your fleets. Oh, okay, yeah. And the size the on the right the says 12. So if you then click onto it, you'll see it's made up of two battleships, two light cruisers, and a load of destroyers. Okay. But they're all fresh experience level. They've not fired a shot in anger or anything. Probably and not. they're down in Rio. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so is the other one as well. Oh, we yeah. have a submarine. And your air force consists of 24 fighters. Uh, yep, hang on. I'm very confused now. Hmm? Oh, no, I'm not. No, don't worry. It's you happy. I'm being, yeah, yeah. I was looking at the Navy thing and I was like, why does it say there's 13, but there's not? There's a submarine fleet and then there's a. Right, so that's, the, that's, the, that's the top section of the screen done. Yep. We're now moving into the bottom right. Specifically, oh Christ, yeah. the three tick boxes. You probably want to turn off the day night loop. Because if you have it at high speed, it's just the screen permanently going day, night, day, night, day, <laughs> night, like one of those terrible clocks that you see. Yep. Um, I don't think I've ever had the middle icon ticked. I mean, you can tick it if you want, but and no, the no. one on the far right, I tend to have on. It means you can see all the planning arrows for your allies as well as yours, so you can kind of get some idea of what they're up to. Okay, but we don't have any allies. No, not at the moment. Cool. Um, but if you're in like a really messy area with 18 different countries all ruled with their own plans trying to help you and there's just arrows everywhere, that's the one you want to knock off again. Gotcha. Uh, you then got the three big buttons next to, sorry, just above those, which are the 
default map mode, the navy map mode, which shows you how the navy split up into regions. Yep. Yep. And then the air force one, which is the same for the air force. You cool. generally want to leave it in the default one. Yeah. Okay. And then you got tiny icons to the right. Yes. Um, I've never really used many of them. The only one that's worth definitely being aware of is the top one. If you click okay. that. So this yep. is supplies. So that big region in the northwest of Brazil is the Amazon. Yeah. You hover over that. It shows yep. you the path supplies would have to take to get there. Okay. That number over the oil can is how much supply you could support in that area. Okay. Um, so what, bearing what in, needs supply? Sorry. Uh, just any military units in the area. Ah, uh, okay. So you've Great. got two divisions in the capital area, and they need three supply. Got you. So if you were to have more than... I don't know, six divisions up in the Amazon, they're going to start starving, running out of ammo, all those other fun Wait. things. Um, okay. Because the infrastructure there is just terrible. Oh, yeah. Um, you can see the linking route, that region sort of between the Amazon and the capital it goes through has 40. Yep. Because it's got, um, is that level six railroads, I think, and a couple of ports. Yep. Um, so... Before you go attacking Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, maybe even Bolivia, you want to make sure you've upgraded the Amazon a bit. Otherwise, yeah. you're not going to be able to get any men in there. So okay. If, if How you, do I... If you go to the Constructions tab, which is where you did the factories. Yep, got it. Then click that railway symbol up at the top of it. Uh -huh. You can sort of see Ooh. the levels of infrastructure. Yep. So you want to boost the Amazon, but you also want to boost the route to the Amazon, which is that, uh, not actually that one, it's this one here. How do I cancel? You right click to oh. remove. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Sure. Oh, did you build one on? Yeah. There so well, that's, yeah. So that would be three of ten, so you probably want the Amazon up to match it. Okay. Um, cool. But then on the left, you'll see they're actually at the bottom of the list, they're pretty low priority. You can yep. push them up if you want, or you can leave them there, or we can just monitor it over time. Let's monitor it. I mean, we can always attack Paraguay and Uruguay and the south first if you want. Yeah, the Argentinians looked at me funny. Let's get them first. Uh, how do I turn off the supply areas map mode then? Because clicking on it. Um, click the default map mode button. Uh, which is... The oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, the shortcuts are F1 through 4, I think. Just be careful you don't hit the F key that turns off your recording. Yep. Which is why I avoid using F keys at all yeah, mine's, possibilities. Mine's over on the number pad. It's cool. Cool. Uh, right. Last thing. Clear that, as mud. That big silhouette guy at the bottom middle is representing your army of, um, well, nobody because you haven't assigned anyone to it yet. Okay, cool. So if you zoom out so you can see Brazil and then zoom in enough so the armies just pop up. Yeah, I can, yeah, I've got the divisions. Yep. Draw a giant box around them, so you've selected them all. Okay. And then click that guy with the plus on his face in the middle. Lovely. You've now assigned them to an army. So that bit down the bottom is your armies. Yep. Can we? Oh, we can re can we rename the army? Oh, yeah, you can rename yes. the army. Right. This can be Moosey. Oh no. Moosey's men. Excellent. <laughs> Um, so the top right you have theatres, so if you're a major nation and you're fighting in the Pacific, the Atlantic, and you're also yep. invading India, you would split them off so that your screen is just not a mess of people. Yep, got you. Um, up in the top left it says click to assign on the portrait. Uh, yep. So now you get to pick which general you want. Oh, If you, if you hover over the two little, um, little medals they've got, you can see their bonuses. Okay, so he... Oh, he's... he. Oh, surely so, we want the jungle guys. Well, when you're going to go through the Amazon, you'll probably want the jungle guy, but for now, you're probably dealing more with forest if you're heading down the south. You can tell that by when you were clicking on um, the states. Yep. The very bottom picture has what the terrain is, if you hover over it. Got oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, oh, plains. Argentina has a lot of forest. And planes. Oh, it does. 
Okay, so we're thinking... Probably the forest guy is better for you for now. Eureka Gaspar. What is the number on the left? Skill 3. Um, that's sort of like his rank level, if you like. Okay. Uh, let me just find it. Here. You'll notice they're both generals. Yeah. And that number 24 on the right means they can only come on 24 divisions before they start getting negative modifiers. Uh, okay. If you were to promote right. them to Field Marshal, they could have as many men as they wanted, but they don't get a lot of these nice medal bonuses. Got you. So well, when you're the, have... the bigger factions, you tend to have one field marshal that's your main front line of just bog standard units, and then you'll have like a tank specialist and marine specialist under separate Got generals. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go for Eureka. Um, yeah. Sweet. Um, so then to select that army, I'm guessing we just. You just click, click his face again. down at the bottom. Mashing. The next, you get this little row of symbols above his head. Yep. Um, don't worry about naval invasions or paratroops. We will yep. come to them later, which is the other nice thing with South America. You have to you have to naval invade round the Panama Canal because the Americans own the Panama Canal. So to get up towards Mexico and those guys up there, you have to do a naval invasion, which is another nice learning curve. Oh, okay. Um, so who 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 are you wanting to bash first, Paraguay right, or well, Uruguay? I want to see. I want to see what they've got. How do we do that again? So that's in trade. Yeah, if I click on trade. So Paraguay, I've got some steel and some tungsten. Yep. And Uruguay have oil and steel. Oil and steel, plus Uruguay looks smaller. Yep. And then it consolidates our flank. Okay, so if you click on his face, what you're looking face. for is the guy with the plus symbol and the dotted line around his head. The front line. Yep. And then... Okay. If you hover over the edge border of uh, Uruguay, you'll see it sort of gives you hashed green lines. Yep. If you right click, you can draw a line. So if you didn't want it to be the whole border, or yep. in this case, because it's so small, just left click and it will add a front line. Okay. Uh, there we go. So you, I'm guessing they're all going to move down there. Yes. Yeah, so if you zoom right in, it says seven divisions, Moose's men. So they'll all run down there. Hey. And um, sort of as align themselves with it. The next cool. arrow you want is the one next to it, which is offensive line. Uh, yep. This is telling them where they're attacking. Okay. Um, it it can be a bit picky. Um, mm -hmm. What you want to do is say pick Montevideo, or whatever it's called, because that's their capital. Yeah. Right click and then sort of draw a little line somewhere. I'll let you play around with it. You want. Oh, okay, like that. Okay. Oh, what? So we, this is the way they're going to yeah. invade? Yeah. If you hover over the arrow, once you've put it down, it will show you the sort of rate of progression they'll try and take. If you hover yeah. over that arrow now, it will say, see, they attack the top two provinces, they push up to the river, then they try and cross the river. Got yeah. Um. Okay. Would you do it that way? Or? Rivers are a major pain in the ass, unless you have marines. They, you know, they're a really good choke point. Yeah. So what I would probably do is how do we remove that? Um. So there's the trash symbol right at the end. You click Got that and then click on the arrow. And it goes. Lovely. So what I would do is have. I tried to put one order like that, and it's messed it up. So then I have to go into <laughs> edit mode drag it there we go ah okay and then have a second oh so you're gonna got yeah, and then you gonna line which will hopefully let me stick it from there oh you back there, there. got you yeah makes so sense it's, it's now two orders um, yes so at the moment you've got seven divisions assigned to the top one and none on the bottom one okay so when oh. we get some new guys we will assign the new guys to the bottom order okay so what they'll do is the top ones will attack up to the river and then just stop. And the bottom ones will ignore that whole top half of the country and try and to push in. Okay. So how do we... Will they go and attack straight away or will they wait uh, We the haven't got line? like a war declaration or anything like that at the moment. Okay. So they will just stack up on the border and sit there. Got you. So, oh, and then there's a click to activate the execution of the entire plan. Yes. So, And if you hover... At, over that it pops up more information and tells you the bonuses and things and the chance of success yep inferior enemy 100 percent 
The little, versions are still preparing while it's running, okay. The little bar right at the bottom. Um, yep. Like below the 7 of 24. Yep. Also cool. gives you an indication of the chance of success. It would be red if it was like, nope, you're not going to manage this at all. But yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. Also think, resolve bar. Like we it. are ready to unpause. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> What's that taking? 45 minutes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's just like okay, my so initial Crusader Kings 2 video where I spent like an hour explaining the damn UI because it's as clear as mud. Yeah. Do you know what? This, um, for how, to be fair, with Crusader Kings, I've never, I've watched a lot, but I've never had it explained to me. Mm -hmm. This makes a lot of sense now I've had it explained. And I really, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. You I see, also really want to make a down second, there now. Yeah, I can see, yeah. So if say for example, so seven days have gone. Yep. So if we click on production, also we're making eighteen guns a day now. We're making almost five support equipment a yep. week. And it's got how much you need for the amount of men you're trying to train currently in the oh, corner. Total needed. Yeah. Got. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if we have a look at recruit and deploy. And there's the little plus symbol, oh, like medic symbol with the circle around it, just above the number per day thing, which is telling you that at the moment all of your equipment is going into reinforcing. Yep. Okay. And that that is from recruit and deploy. That's because we've got reinforcements as high priority. And you'll notice we have insufficient resources because the two ships we're trying to build need oil. So you can go trade for some oil, or you can you can leave them producing with some of the resources missing, but they will take a lot longer. Well, let's get some oil then. Let's trade. So oil. So without oil, it's taking one point five nine years to make a destroyer. And then when you get us oil, we'll see what that number changes to. Okay, so we can buy eight for one civilian factory. Yep. And it's now uh, 1.11 a year. So you've just knocked 30 percent, 33 percent off of the duration. Wait, and um, the convoys we're now building 1.2 a month rather than yeah, well, what, whatever it was a year, seven per year or something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And our political power is going up. Um, if you click the, the big Brazil flag, you can see how your political effort thing is going. Yep. Um, what else are we doing? Research. Where do we check research? Where is that? Yep. Research next tab along. Cool. Okay. So the 70. It's 70 days total for the political effort. So that would be the one that finishes first. Yeah. Uh, I think mechanical engineering will finish next. Yeah. Got it. It's gone under 70 days now. Um, I really want to. How? So, what do we have to do? Okay. So, for, love for the, all this building factories and stuff, but I want to kill some Uruguayans. Yeah. For for now, <laughs> we we need to get the fascist because to be able to declare war, you pr pretty much need to be a fascist. So that that's okay. the big goal. Um, so, as Brazil, you pretty much play the early game at speed four, maybe even five. I don't know if multiplayer will handle five. But okay. um, if you get any, we need to get down to nationalism focus. Yeah. Yeah. If you get any pop ups. Just pause it if it doesn't auto pause. Okay. Um, right. Uh, so... We've got three dockyards. Yep. So we can build. Oh, I see. Because you told it to only build one convoy. So just set it to infinite convoys. Okay. Cool. It, it will just sit there quite happily. So where do the convoys go once they're built? Um. So top middle, you've got three numbers I didn't explain, and then a forty-one. Ah, yes. So yeah. forty-one's your convoys. Okay. The three numbers I didn't explain are. Um, army, air, and navy experience, which let you do various things. The army ones let you change those templates. Um, okay. So you can add different things to your army units. Got you. Yeah. The navy and the air force ones let you build variants. So you could build a variant of your destroyer that has bigger guns or better engines or thicker armor. Right. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. It lets you sort of modify them so that you can. Okay. Um, say you don't want to research the next technology up because it's going to take a while and you're researching better things. It's a way of getting an improvement without having to go down that route. Got yeah. Okay. 